Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe you're excited to join us this morning for our service. Um, today, I plan to start a new series called the Dominion Mandate. The Dominion Mandate. However, as we put to rest um, our series on um, the ministry of angels, um, I'm going to have a master class, a paid master class uh, on a private platform. If you'd like to be part, use the number on your screen right now. Just send an, um, a WhatsApp message and just say master class on the ministry of angels and we'll reply you and take it from there. But today, start a new series called the Dominion Mandate. The Dominion Mandate. Um, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for my listeners and for myself. For them, I ask that their hearts will be flooded with light this morning. Um, they will be engaged to walk even in the dominion mandate and produce results that is consistent with their nature. In the name of Jesus, I ask for myself that the words of my mouth this morning and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. I would flow as you give me utterance in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Genesis chapter number one. It's always from Genesis. You can't teach dominion mandate. I can't teach dominion mandate without going through Genesis. All right. Genesis chapter number one, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth hmm. glory to god in verse 27 the bible now says so god created man in his own image so god created man in his image in the image of god he created he him male and female he created he them then god blessed them and said to them be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion after subdue it you have a semicolon you now say to you i have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth now go to the book of psalms psalms chapter number eight from verse four what do you say he says what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him for you have made him a little lower than angels or than Elohim. Then, and you have crowned him. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. See that? You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Okay. You have put all things. He explains what dominion over the work of his hands means. He now says, you have put all things under his feet. Wow. Now, these two texts I just read describes man, not the Christian. Did you hear that? Because Adam was not the Christian. Praise God. Adam was not an IRA member. Praise God. He was not a Christian. This text describes man, man, man. The dominion mandate here spoken to man was actually spoken over him as dominion over all things now what do you call dominion to explain dominion i looked at three things i look at the word sovereignty i look at the word stewardship and i look at the word supremacy you cannot explain dominion without looking at these three words for you to properly explain dominion you have to look at you have to look at it think about it in the form of sovereignty you have to look at it from the point of um, stewardship and you have to look at it from the point of supremacy so when we say man was given dominion over something it describes that man was given um, sovereignty. He was given sovereignty. He was given um, supremacy. Also, stewardship. Because in God's mind and the original intent of God for man, 
uh, is that man should have dominion over all things the way he wants it, not the way man wants it. Though man could have met, the man might have messed up a lot of these things right now, that's not the debate. But God gave man dominion over all things, intending that man will rule over them the way he wants it. That's still worship now. Okay. So what do we call dominion? Dominion is power or the use of power. Dominion means uh, to prevail against another. Dominion means to rule over another. Dominion means to rule over another. Now, the Bible tells you clearly that God gave man dominion over all things, over the works of God's hand. I know many of us, we don't like to believe that God gave man dominion over all things. We just want to believe man, God gave man dominion over animals, over plants, over few things. But that's not what the Bible says. He says he gave man dominion over the work, over the works of his hand. If you look around you and you find something God created, then God gave man dominion over that thing. Man. So we're not talking about the Christian man yet. We're just looking at the role of man in the dominion mandate. When you go back to the book of Genesis, if you go back to the book of Genesis, and you see what God told Adam, when God blessed Adam and Eve, or blessed the male and the female, and he gave them dominion, at first, the Bible says he blessed them. What was the blessing? He says, be fruitful, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it. Three key words. Three key words. Fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. All right. I don't want to pick fill the earth as another word. So I believe multiplication because here it says, but fruitful and multiply, semicolon. So how do I, how do I, how am I fruitful and how do I multiply? How am I going to be fruitful and multiply? I'm going to fill the earth and I'm going to subdue it. Now the word subdue hits me strongly when I check to my computers. It says the word subdue means to bring into bondage. Woo. To bring into bondage. The word subdue means to put under subjection. That was the word the Lord was speaking to his Lord. The Bible says in Hebrew, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Till I make your enemies your footstool. He's the same. When it also says in the book of Hebrew, he says, uh, he has put all things under the subjection of man, of man, but we do not yet see all things under him. Hebrews chapter number 2. So he says here to you that the word, uh, that, that the blessing of God over man was that he should subdue and fill the head. Wow, it should bring the head to his own subjection, to his own cup, to his own bondage. It should make the head answer to him. Whoa, hallelujah! Follow me carefully. Now, in this dominion mandate given to man, we began to see something. I, I saw. I began to understand what what the phrase, the image of God, means. If you look at it carefully, God first said, let us create man in our own image. In our own image. And when he says, let us create man in our own image, he meant uh, uh, he, he was talking to people. All right. Uh, he said, let us make man in our own image. Uh, when God said that, the word God there is Elohim, which is the plural term of God. So it wasn't like God was talking to himself. It was the plurality of God. Are you following me? Okay. So when he said, let us make man in our own image. We have quick to accept. We have been quick to accept the fact that uh, so man is in the image of God or the image and likeness of God. So when we say man is in the image and likeness of God, um, the average Christian believes that man looks like God or man is God. Now, back, go, go back a little. Anytime the Bible, the Bible actually used the phrase image of God twice um, in relation to two people in the Bible. Now, the first time it was used was in Genesis chapter number 1. When he's when Bible says, Let us make man in our own image, and Bible says that was done. And Bible says, And so God created man in his image. That was a done deal. But the context of this image was the fact that God gave a right, God gave an ability, a heart to man, or he has still now to, to man. 
and in that in the giving of that ability to man what he gave to man was the dominion mandate are you following me so the image of god in genesis chapter number one that was given to adam was the ability to dominate the head to subdue the head god given the reign of the head to man now the first time it was used like say what was in genesis and this man was first called uh, the first adam if you go to first corinthians chapter number 15 this man was called the first adam it was called the man of dust and it was called a living being in chapter number two of Genesis, Bible says the man became a living being. Now, this was the first man that was called, uh, that was said to have received the image of God or created in God's image. Bible calls him the first Adam. By Adam, Adam was not his name. Adam just a description of his race. It was his name and the name of a race because the word Adam means mankind. So he was a head of that race, and by that right. But that right, he was uh, in the image of God, and everybody that would come in his race would inherit the same from him. In Genesis, further in chapter number five of Genesis, the Bible tells us that this image of God was imparted by birth. The Bible speaks of Adam and it says that Adam now um, had a child called Seed, and his child called Seed was in his image and likeness. Remember, Adam was in the image of God. What was that? The dominion mandate. So the dominion mandate was transferred from man to man through birth because now seed was now in his father's image praise god but there's another context of the image of god which i will quickly talk about now which i would address later in the series is uh now talking about the image of god in relation to another person called christ jesus he was called the second man in the first Corinthians chapter number 15 also he was called the second man but he was called the last adam uh, does that mean Cain? Cain was not the second man. No, because the, the next time the image of God was manifested in a man was Jesus directly from the Father, from the source. Was Jesus. So he was called the second man, yet called the last Adam. So why was he called the last Adam? He was called the last Adam because after him, there will be no other. I mean, after us, because the word Adam is the name of a race. So he represented the name of a race called the race called the new creation. Or the race of the life given spirit after that race there'll be no other so it was called the last adam it means like this is the race of this man that will receive the coming of jesus it is the race of this man that will see to the end of the earth of this earth and this and, and the new earth. after all there is no other glory to god now this man too was called the image of god in hebrews chapter number one it was actually called the exact the totality the exact the express image of god so you are now saying that the totality of God in his image and likeness was found in another man called Jesus. But the first time the image of God was described in a man, it was called, described in Adam. And that man was the first man called Adam. And the manifestation of that image was in the dominion mandate. Hallelujah. I believe you got that. So when God said to Adam, I'm dominion over the earth, that was God handling the earth to man. That was God handling the rulership of the head to man. In Psalms chapter number 115 verse 16, the Bible says, The heavens, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth he has given, he has given to the sons of men. And it is in that we see the stewardship, the sovereignty and the supremacy of man in the head. So the gift of the head to man was like a lease, somewhat like a lease to man. But man was imparted with the ability, the ability to rule the head, to subjugate it, to have dominion over it. Man, man, man body from dust man a being with a body that is from dust that is why it was said in first Corinthians 15 that the first man was earthly of dust of dust the other spirit there has body the other spirits there are body but they are not of dust glory to god so god gave this dominion to man now in giving this dominion to man in god handling the rulership of the head to man man began to express it in different ways one of the ways man one of the ways man express his, his um, rulership on the head is through his creativity another is through his innovation another is through his invention but through all of this man is trying to make living on earth easy for him man is trying to sub subdue the head and have dominion over the space called earth so man's creativity man's innovation man inve man's invention all of these they are all expression of the image of god in man the manifestation of the dominion mandate glory to jesus so man as you see it 
rules this place. He rules this place. So when, he's, when, when, when man begins to blame God for what happens on head, I just smile. I just say to myself, that man does not understand the dominant mandate yet. I know you've heard stories of how a baby died in a plane crash. Innocent child. Or how a baby, uh, or how, how there was a natural phenomenon, um, earthquake, right? That's what we call it. <laughs> An earthquake happened somewhere. Or there was a tornado. And a little child died. Died. A child of one day old, two day old, three day old. What did the child do? God, God, why did God do nothing? God was just looking. No, 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 no. The dominion of the head has been given to man. For God to interfere in the head again, God will require permission. God will require permission. Now, before I go further in that, to understand dominion of man accurately, you look at the account in Genesis. Account in Genesis, look at the fall of man. You must be careful to understand scriptures, in understanding scriptures, that the fall of man did not take away the dominion of man. It was the fall of man, Bible calls it, not the, not the loss of man's dominion. People have always believed that when man, when man sinned, uh, man, man, God took away his dominion or man lost his dominion. No, no, no. That can't be. The Bible tells me in the book of Romans, chapter number 11, verse 29, it says the gifts of God, the gifts of God, they are without repentance. The gifts of God are without repentance. And his domi the dominion mandate of man was a gift. It was a gift given to man. So God wouldn't have taken away the dominion of man. And if he did, there are a lot of things we have to question. There are a lot of things we have to question in scriptures. But let's look at what you what, what we usually think, what we usually read in scripture, and just believe this is why man lost his dominion. This is why, or this is how God took away his dominion. In Luke chapter number four. In Luke chapter number four from verse five. Then the devil taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Okay? There is no such mountain anywhere in the world. So you begin to understand that the temptation was not physical. Does the devil tempt you physically? No, he does not. He does so in your thought realm. So he did with Eve. There was nothing physical about Eve's temptation too. All happened in the thought realm. In the heart all right so he showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time in verse 6 and the devil said to him all these authority now not dominion authority by that right to use power right i will give to you and their glory for it has been delivered to me and i give it to whomever i wish Verse 7, I said, therefore, if you worship, if you will worship before me, it will all be yours. The Bible said, Jesus rebuked the devil and said, get behind me. You shall only worship your, your Lord, your God, and him alone you will serve. But notice that Jesus did not tell um, Satan that he was lying. He didn't say, no, devil, well, shut up. What are you saying? You're wrong. Like he said of Moses, said, Moses said this, but this is what I'm saying. That Moses was wrong. But he didn't say that here. But what does Jesus, what does the Bible mean when he say, when, when, when the devil said, uh, all of these have been given unto me. He says the dominion, the, the authority and the glories of the head has been given unto me. The authority and the glory of the head. I, I, I seem like a Lord here. What was the devil saying? Was, that, was it that the devil, was it that Adam handed over the dominion of man to the devil when he said, the devil, take this the package. Could it be that? Could it be that? All right. Understand this. Understand this carefully. That the word dominion also means reign. The reign, the rulership. If you understand why God came, why Jesus came, he's God. If you understand why Jesus came, Jesus came to take back the heart of man. In the book of Revelation, one number three, verse 20, he says, So you yeah, stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you will let me in, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. Okay. So the reason Jesus came is so that you would receive him into your heart and through you, through you, a spirit in you, you will now reign on the earth. So you, your, your reign on the earth will actually be the reign of God in the earth. So Jesus came so that God's spirit will live in you and so that God will reign on the earth through you. Because God could not reign on the earth anymore after he gave the dominion of the earth to Adam. No, he couldn't. He has to reign on the earth through man. 
Glory to God. Same. That is why the devil too came after Adam. So the devil came after Adam so that Adam will yield the lordship of his heart to him. And Adam yielding the lordship of his heart to him, what will happen to Adam? Adam will now be doing the devil's bead. They will now do the devil's command. They yield the lordship of their heart to him. So the devil can now reign through the heart of men. Look everywhere all around, all around the world. The tussle, the fight between good and evil is a fight for the heart of men. It's a fight for the heart of men. So the devil is trying to get the heart of men so that through men it can reign on the head. The devil does not, cannot reign on the head except through man. Why? He's a spirit, not of dust. The dominion of the head was given to the man of dust. Praise God. That's why in the book of in the book of Romans, Romans chapter number six, verse sixteen, it tells you, "Do you not know to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? Slaves to obey. You are that one slave whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death, or of obedience leading to righteousness." You don't get that. So it means uh, in yielding to the devil and obeying the devil, man became slave to the devil. Now you can say, okay, if man becomes a slave to another, the master owns the slave. Yes. So the, 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 the master causes the slave to do his bidding. So when man obeyed the devil, man, man allowed the devil to reign through him on the head. Because God's agenda on the head will only be done through men. The devil's agenda on the head will only be done through men. Glory to Jesus. So you begin to see that what, 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 what Adam was saying, what, what the devil was saying to, to Jesus was that, listen, you came for the heart of men. You came to die for their sins. You came to die so that they will accept you as Lord. So that your spirit will live in them. Let's not go to the cross. I can give you on the platter of gold. I can give you on the platter of gold. That's what he was saying. And Jesus said, no, that wouldn't be. Again, if, the de- if man had actually yielded his dominion to the devil, <laughs> you know what it means? It means that um, every man that would, that would express the dominion of God that was given to him would have to consult the devil. But glory to God, Joshua did not consult the devil before he told the, 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 the head to stand still. The Bible says the sun, but we know it's the head to stand still because the sun does not rotate, it's the head that rotates. Hallelujah. Moses did not consult the devil before he parted the Red Sea. Elijah did not consult the devil before he called on the fire from heaven. This was the expression of man's dominion over the elements of the head. And he didn't do that with the help of the devil. So man never lost his dominion. Man only yielded the rulership of his heart to God's enemy. The dominion of man is a gift to man. And that's why you see those creativity all around town. You see the innovations all around town. You see man's ideal around whether they are Christians or not. Whether they are Christians or not, the ability to create, to innovate, is given to all men. It's the expression of man's dominion. Further on that, have you ever asked yourself questions? Why is it that uh, in the dominion of in the dominion mandate or in the in, in, in the dominion mandate all men are included? Yes, that's God's plan. He wants all man to have dominion. And that's why you hear stories of how a witch or a wizard killed another man. If you have not heard, if you have seen it in the movie, uh, somebody goes to the village and one man or a woman in the village does something in a pot and tells you, who do you want to call? Then you mention your landlord's name or your neighbor's name or your friend's name. And your friend is, is called in the village. And the guy answers in Lagos. Oh, no. Sorry. That's what we say to your brother. And the guy answers in Lagos. And there's a manifestation. And the guy dies. 
How did that happen? Yes, I know a spirit was consulted. So that was possible because a spirit was consulted through the agency of a man. Man. And that is why in dominion we talk about the sovereignty of man. We talk about the supremacy of man. And we talk about the stewardship of man. Now you may say that's not the best use of man's dominion. Yes. Because that's where we talk about the stewardship of man. Man is expected to use his dominion on the earth the way God wants it. But God won't judge him now. Whichever way he uses it, God won't judge him now. He has the right to use the dominion on the earth. Glory to Jesus. Now, you need to begin to understand the place of man in the earth. You need to understand the place of man in the scheme of things. The place of man in how things are done in the earth. You cannot explain dominion in the earth until you explain it within the context of man. Man. No one at the time he said, what is man that you are mindful of him? Man. Do you remember that even God needed the agency of men to make sure Jesus was born. Jesus, God's dream, God becoming man, God needed the agency of men to make sure Jesus was on the earth. How did he start? After there was a promise in Genesis chapter number 3 that the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent's head. It took 4,000 years we took 4,000 years before we saw the manifestation of that prophecy. So God recruited men. He got men to begin to speak. So we have prophets speaking all over the nations. We have Micah. In Micah chapter number 5, verse 2, Micah said, But you, Jerusalem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come out the one that shall be the ruler over Israel, whose origin are from old and from ancient times. So we saw prophets begin, begin to speak about God's dream coming to pass. So prophets were lending their voice, though inspired by God, they were lending their voice. Men were releasing their, their sound to making sure that God's dream came to pass. Then in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 9, verse 6, we find the prophet saying, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Why, why were they doing this? God were recruiting men to speak his dream into existence because without the agency of man without the dominion of man included in this thing jesus will not be born and finally you found the angel you find the angel standing before mary the angel didn't just stand before mary uh, he was sent yes but men must have released words because it's men that release words for angels to move praise god right so we found the angel standing before mary in the book of luke and the angel said to me mary, mm, mary you are greatly beloved. You are favored of God. You are favored of God. In verse 30. In verse 30. See this. See. It. And the angel said to Mary. Fear not Mary. For you have found favor with God. And behold. You shall conceive in thy womb. And bring forth a son. And you shall call his name. Jesus. Okay. What was happening there? That was God asking Mary for a body. Praise God. In verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. His name shall be called Jesus. He shall be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give him the throne of his father, David. Alright. Jump down to 34. Look at Mary's response. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, how shall this be seen? I do not know a man. The angel explained. After the angel explained, the, finally, the, in verse 38, uh, Mary said, Behold the handmaiden of the Lord, be it to me, be it unto me according to your words. Be it unto me according to your words. That was where Mary yielded her womb for the Holy Ghost to come in. And the Bible said, The power of God came on her. I said, And she was with a child, fathered by the Holy Ghost. So God could not come on earth to live on earth without the body. Without the body from a woman of dust. Without the body from a woman of dust. That was man holding his place as man, as a custodian of the dominion of the earth. Praise God. So God gave the dominion of the earth to man. Whatever spirit, whatever spiritual activity you want to see on earth must go through the portal of a man. Beat the devil, be it God. 
So anytime you, you, you shout, and oh, that was a great meeting. The move of God was strong. God was in that meeting. I believe you. But it was because a man yielded to the move of God. It was because a man yielded himself. And if you say, oh, the devil is fighting my family. The devil, is, the devil is doing this to me. My family is under attack. I understand. But it's a man that has also yielded his heart and body to the devil to attack your family. Every activity of spirit you see around here is the activity of men. Men who have yielded themselves to the influence of such spirit. So the dominion of man is seen clearly in Genesis 1. In Genesis chapter number 2, we saw a body given to him, a body that is of dust given to him, so that the expression of this dominion mandate could be possible. So the dominion mandate of man was his power, but his body, his rights, his authority. So there's a difference between dominion and authority. Dominion itself is power. Authority is right to use power. So man without a body wouldn't have done nothing. That is why when you read Genesis from Genesis chapter number 1 to Genesis chapter number 2, you cannot find the activity of man. Even though man was created already in Genesis chapter number 1 and he was blessed already with dominion mandate, male and female, man was silent. Nothing was seen until man was given a body in chapter number 2. And the moment man was given a body, the first thing you saw was man toasting the woman. Hallelujah. Why? Because he had a medium of expression of his dominion mandate. Man. Man. For you to go up in life, you need to understand the role of man. For you to go down in life, you need to despise the role of man. For God to do anything in the head, he engages men. For the devil to do anything in the head, he also engages men. If you look at your life today, check where you are. A man brought you there. A man and a woman gave it to you. Make sure you were born. A man fed you. Alright, those, let's say those ones are too basic. Uh, my, my, my parent did that. Okay. You got born again. A man preached to you. You got filled in the Holy Ghost. A man prayed for you. You flew in the things of the Spirit. A man taught you. A man imparted you. You got a job. A man connected you. The ministry of men. You cannot underestimate the ministry of man in the scheme of things of the earth. I was blessed when I saw in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number 2 that the world to come has actually been put even under men. Follow me. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hebrews chapter number 2 verse 5. It says, For he has not put the world to come of which we speak in subjection to angels. Then they began to describe man. That in a certain place says, What is a man that you are mindful of him? Now you begin to ask yourself questions. So the dominion of the earth does not just belong to man now. Glory to God. The dominion of the earth belongs to man now and it will belong to man even in the world to come. Praise God. But in all, as I end today's message, I need you to understand that the dominion that was given to man was created. In Colossians chapter number 1, verse 26, the Bible tells us that all things were made by him, whether they be thrones, whether they be dominions, whether they be principalities. So including the dominion of man, it was created and gifted to him. To the dominion of a man. So the dominion of man is a gift to man. It's a gift to man. And God's gifts are without repentance. As you understand your place as man today, and your dominion given to you as man, you begin to see the world around you, the way you ought to see it, the way God wants you to see it. You begin to see the world around you as being under you. And you begin to annex all of God's power on your inside to subjugate it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe that word was a blessing for you. 